Friends, it is Monday, September 25, 2023, and by tuning into this devotional, you are joining a company of people who want to grow in faith and hope and love and in their understanding of Scripture. So we come into these moments expecting that uh, as we read Scripture and, and think about it together, pray through it a little bit, that God is going to meet us in those moments. So let's begin now with some of the most famous verses in the Bible, some of the uh, most challenging verses in the Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to read uh, verses 43 and 44 from Matthew, Let's uh, chapter 5. Let's listen to that. You've heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, uh, you've heard it said that you should hate your enemies. It's, you won't find a verse that, that tells us to hate enemies in the Old Testament. There are verses that take up very angry attitudes toward uh, enemies of Israel and, uh, and wish woe and other kinds of destruction on them in the Psalms. You can certainly find a number of those. And um, this phrase, however, most likely refers not obliquely to an implication in the Psalms, but perhaps directly to some rules that appeared later, some interpretations that appeared later in what's called the Mishnah and the Talmud. Uh, the scribes who studied the law wanted to do what they called uh, fencing the law, uh, protecting it. And so there was an oral tradition that by the third century in the Mishnah had been codified and it ran to about 800 pages. And then um, there was also the Talmud, which were commentaries on scripture, and they ran to many volumes. I think the Jerusalem version was about 12 and the Babylonian one was about 60. There were some busy scholars in, in Babylon commenting and thinking about the law. And um, those scholars knew the famous verse that Jesus would later refer to in uh, Leviticus 19.18, you shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. But um, they, as they began to explicate all of these things in these uh, long commentaries, sometimes they started to reverse those things. And this is one of those examples that um, you could have one sort of attitude toward those who were neighbors around you and another toward those who'd set themselves as enemies or who were perhaps defined as enemies, given their uh, attitude toward Israel. And that's a big shift a big change. Sometimes we take things that are, are simple and straightforward and we, and we make them complicated. Now, that doesn't change the fact that Jesus' teaching that we should love our enemies is a revolutionary and um, shocking, uh, surprising thing to say in a divided and a, a divisive world. And it right away undermines the, the myth that holiness and goodness is easily attainable. If holiness and goodness looks like being able to love those who set themselves against you, um, then we're not just talking about holiness and goodness being common features of everyday good folks. Uh, we're talking about a, a level of um, spirituality that is quite different than that. This changes the way we should approach all our human relationships. We shouldn't always be thinking in terms of the quid pro quo and the reciprocal bargain. Um, this is calling us to a form of regard for others that is beyond our self-interest. And it requires a dependence on God. God is the source of this special kind of love, agape, which is committed to the good of other people, no matter what, even if our good is, is, is in some ways compromised. And this is, of course, not to condone any form of abuse. And it's not to give up our concerns for justice. There are times when the most loving thing is to stop someone from doing wrong things. And, um, you know, love can take the form of discipline or even opposition at times. But what would our lives look like if we were unconditionally committed to the good of other people? Um, it is, this is to be the case even when those people don't return our love. And even when they begin to act or think against us, agape has a certain way of viewing others in the world as being uh, loved children of God, God, regardless of whether they've done anything to uh, merit our respect. 
This is challenging stuff, and we're going to explore it this week. So I think we better begin uh, this day, this Monday day, with a prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to move us beyond self-interested love toward unconditional commitment to the good of others. And help us when we look at your law, not to get caught in the minutiae or change it by additions, but instead to major in the majors and uh, seek to both love and to fulfill the many commands that you give us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.